Today we have several updates concerning many NHL teams as they prepare for the 2021 NHL season. Some of what we're going to talk about today is rumors on the latest signings we might see as well as some trades. We're looking at teams like the Boston Bruins, the Winnipeg Jets, Tampa Bay Lightning, New York Rangers, and more. We'll discuss all the latest coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a lot to cover here today. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, things kind of still up in the air with many NHL teams as they kind of wait for the 2021 NHL season to be finalized. Uh, as I mentioned before, I do expect there to be a lot of activity later this month, but I think a lot of things are still basically at a standstill until the 2021 season gets sorted out. But the latest information we have here today, a lot of it comes from the latest reports between Boston Hockey Now and Pittsburgh Hockey Now talking about what their sources are telling them. So we'll discuss what the articles that they put out here are saying and see what we think about the latest information. Now, first up, uh, Joe Haggerty of Boston Hockey Now has reported on multiple occasions, but uh, talking about it again recently, that he feels that the Bruins are likely going to sign uh, a veteran defenseman to have kind of as an insurance piece or to have somebody back there who can be like a number six, seven guy, uh, maybe be under taxi squad since they'll likely have expanded rosters. Um, and a lot of that's going to depend on if Captain Zdeno Chara comes back. And we're going to talk about him a little further as well here later in the video. But even if Chara comes back, there's still the likelihood that they could still try to bring in another veteran defenseman. It would have to be something that's reasonably cheap and inexpensive, uh, probably on a one-year deal, maybe even on a tryout basis. I mean, as we get closer to the season being announced and training camps opening, we're going to see a lot of these guys that don't have contracts actually end up going to camp on tryouts you know especially the team the players that are you know a little bit lower here in the uh the ranking scale i guess you could say amongst the the free agents out there so we'll see but one of the names that's been mentioned is former Habs and capitals defenseman carl alsner now when he was with washington uh, he was regarded as a pretty decent like shut down a defensive style stayed home defenseman had some really good seasons when it comes to his plus minus and his numbers look pretty good uh, you know, for the most part from an analytical standpoint, but things did not work out at all in Montreal. Uh, he was overpaid from the get-go. I think most of us would agree on that. Um, and the expectations, of course, that comes being in a Habs uniform with that kind of contract was a recipe for disaster. Things did not work out. It was not long at all before the Habs had him, uh, you know, as a healthy scratch and then later down to the minors. And he spent a lot of time in the minors over the past couple of years where the Habs have been trying to figure out a way to move on from him. They brought him up occasionally to the NHL, give him a little bit of playing time to see if they could showcase him, get somebody to take it off their hands. And it never worked out. There was just too much term, too much money, and no other NHL teams were going to bite. But now that he's been bought out of his contract and he's a free agent, it's all, you know, we're starting all over again here and it's a whole different story. So for a team to take him on a one year contract at league, league minimum, for example, would be something teams would likely entertain. I mean, he's got a lot of valuable experience. Uh, so for a team like Boston, who already lost Tory Krug, uh, might be losing Captain Zdeno Chara, to have, you know, he's not going to replace those guys by any means, like nowhere near that caliber of defenseman, but just to have another guy they can go to that on a third pair, when if they need it, depending on injuries and whatnot, you know, it might make sense to bring in a veteran guy on a cheap deal. And according to Haggerty, he's one of the guys that they're looking at and considering possibly signing or at least inviting to training camp on a tryout basis. That's probably the route I would go if I were me making those decisions. I would want to see him in camp, see how he compares to their other defensemen and kind of make an assessment at that point and see if you want to sign him to a you know a seven eight hundred thousand dollar one year deal. But we will see. But according to those reports, the Bruins are considering Alsner as a potential uh, extra depth piece to add into their organization. Now, now, the latest reports here as well through Boston Hockey Now also talk a lot about the Winnipeg Jets and Patrick Lani. Now, they say they have sources indicating that the Jets really are not going to be all that kind of, you know, upset or whatever with trading Lani because clearly it looks as though it's something that both the team and the player want to do. Now, they reminded us much earlier in the offseason of the comments made by Patrick Lani's agents indicating that they felt it was best for both parties to move on. Uh, so obviously remember that from Mike Leute and company there uh, talking about the future of Patrick Lane in Winnipeg. Uh, they weren't going to come out and say that Lane requested a trade, but indicated that with all the conversations going on about his future, that it was best 
for both parties to go their separate ways. So if you feel that that's still very likely true, and at this point, you know, we haven't had a season and we haven't had a training camp, so we don't have any reason to believe anything has changed, it seems more and more likely that a line A trade out of Winnipeg seems inevitable. It's just a matter of finding the right deal for the right price tag. Obviously, as I mentioned before, this is a trade that the Jets would have to be very careful with because he's not the kind of player you can just get your hands on very easily. They were fortunate enough to be lucky in the draft lottery back in 2015 and got the number two overall pick behind Austin Matthews. So clearly, you know, that was a good draft year for them. They lucked out a little bit. I mean, you know, you don't want to just give the guy away. I mean, they need multiple pieces coming back to make sure their team is, you know, if they're going to be missing that kind of goal scorer, that they have a more balanced team is kind of what they're hoping for here. Ideally, a long-term solution to the number two center. They have Paul Stastny now, but, you know, he's not a long-term solution. Uh, you know, and then you also need to rebuild up blue line core after having it depleted, uh, you know, in last year's offseason when they had a mass exodus there on the blue line and then on top of that lost Dustin Bufflin afterwards as well. So, you know, they have a lot to do. But we know there's been a lot of teams kicking tires on Patrick Laine making a trade. But according to their sources, a trade of Laine out of Winnipeg still seems very likely. And it's just a matter of time for them to find the right contract. If he does stay with the Jets to start the season, many feel that before the contract is up that he likely would end up, end up getting dealt here sooner or later. So we'll see. Jets are not going to hesitate if the right deal comes along. Now back to Bruins captain Zdeno Chera. Will he be captain much longer? Will the Bruins be looking for a new captain as they open the upcoming season? Obviously his future has a major question mark on it. And this article goes on to reference some more teams, including the New York Rangers, who apparently have interest in Zdeno Chera should he decide he wants to play for the upcoming season. Now that's a little bit surprising to me to have the Rangers link to Chara, I mean, you'd have to think that with all the players they have on the blue line right now that, you know, they're not going to want to bump one of their younger guys considering where things are at. The Rangers went through a rebuild. They're kind of starting to come out of it. You now they made the playoffs last year, mostly because it was expanded playoffs, obviously, but still they had some good experience. They're at the stage, though, between the free agent signings, the players they've drafted, and, of course, then now they have Alexi Lafreniere to add in the mix. Uh, you know, they're coming out of the rebuild and they're building towards the future. I don't know really, you know, that they would want to add a veteran like Chara. Not to say that he couldn't be a great mentor for their young blue line core. I mean, they have guys there like D'Angelo and Fox and Trouba who could benefit a lot from having a guy like Chara around. Not going to lie about that. Clearly, that would be great. But do they also want to cut their playing time to have a guy of that magnitude around? And you would also think with a player of Chara's magnitude, with everything he's accomplished in his career now, if he ended up leaving Boston... Would it not be to maybe chase another Stanley Cup? Like, And, of course, the Bruins are still going to be a pretty strong team. So I would think that it's going to have to be a situation that he would deem to be even better to consider moving franchises, possibly uprooting his family, all those things. I just don't see him going to New York. New York is a team that's on the rise. They have a great young uh, group of players that are going to help this team be really solid into the future. But I don't think we're anywhere at the point yet where we can say they're you know solid top cup contenders. I mean, someday in the next few years, I think that's a possibility for sure, but we're not there yet. So I don't see, you know, uh, an aging chair leave Boston to go to, to the Rangers. So to me, I, I still have that gut feeling he's either going to sign a Boston or he's going to hang him up. That's my thought. So even though these guys have a lot of Bruins sources and they've been adamant that there's not really any chatter going on and that they don't feel he's coming back, they might be right on that. But I'm going to say that I don't agree with the rumor that the Rangers would want to go after Chara. We've also heard the Maple Leafs as well, which I don't think makes any sense either. Like I said, you know, there's a lot of great young players who could benefit from having him on the team. And, you know, from a cap perspective and, you know, blocking another player's playing time perspective, I just don't see that making a whole lot of sense. You'd have to see him being a number five, six defenseman on another solid cup contending team would be the only kind of situation I could see him maybe going to. And when you look around the NHL, there's just not much there that would really indicate a, a great fit besides where he's at in Boston. So we will see. Now, they also went on to talk about the uh, previous trade rumors on Steven Stanko. So where things stand here today? We had had rumors back earlier in the offseason that the Lightning had approached everybody on their team that they were going to consider moving that had a no trade clause because they have a lot of them, as we've discussed numerous times here. And that list included Captain Steven Stamkos. Now, there's a few players that have a no trade that they would not consider trading for sure, and they were not approached. So we're looking at, like, Victor Hedman, for example. Uh, Kucherov's another good example of that. Uh, you know, a guy like Braden Point doesn't have one yet. He hasn't been in the league long enough to qualify in his contract. 
But a guy like Stamkos, who's their captain, and they showed through the playoffs where he didn't play hardly at all, that they didn't need him to be the top Stanley Cup contending team. Like They were won with, without him for the most part. Even though he's a great hockey player and he's accomplished a lot in his career, they showed they could win without him. But of course, it was reported earlier, and he was even asked in interviews, would you consider waving? And of course the answer was no. And I would think that you know, from a public standpoint, he's not going to come out and say yes publicly. That would never happen, even if the answer was maybe or was yes. He's not going to come out publicly and say that. That's just not going to happen. So, you know, obviously it's being reported, though, that the Lightning, even though they don't feel that the odds are good that he would wave, are still kind of poking around and shopping him to see if they could find a deal to move along his salary. Because obviously moving his salary would be a huge cap relief for them. And they really wouldn't get much of a weakness on the team, obviously, because they already showed they could win without him, as I mentioned. So, obviously... You know, if, if this is true and they are kind of poking around, I think they're probably wasting their time because, as we know, most players in Tampa are not going to help them out and wave that no trade clause, especially Captain Steven Samkos, who just won a Stanley Cup with his best buddy, Victor Hedman. They have long term deals. Uh, the, the Stamkos contract is kind of what led to the Hedman contract being long term. Like, they're not going to leave, and I just don't see a scenario why it would be worth uh, Breeze Boss' time really. Working hard on a deal. Now, if he was approached and it sounded like an awesome deal, I could see him maybe circling back and saying, hey, Stamkos, is there any way you'd consider this? You know, But the answer is going to be no. So to me, I don't think there's much to it that Stamkos would be being shopped. I mean, I can understand why it would make sense, and I agree that they should, but it's in his court. It's in his control. I don't see a scenario coming where he's going to change his mind. So we'll see what happens. Another rumor from Boston Hockey now that I'm going to have to say, I just don't think there's anything to it. Now, they also went on to talk about Max Patch already. Now, this information seemed a little bit more credible. Of course, they're the ones, of course, that we've gotten our recent information from talking about Pittsburgh as well as the LA Kings. And I've talked about that in recent videos where I said the Penguin rumor, but Patch already to me didn't make a lot of sense. The Kings one does make sense. They're a team like the Rangers that are coming out of the rebuild. They got great resources, lots of great prospects. They could be a team with the space necessary to give up an asset or two of younger prospects or picks to move a, acquire a guy like that to take the team and move them in the right direction, take them forward. You know, and they they're linking some more teams to Patch Ready in this latest article, which also again includes the New York Rangers, the New Jersey Devils, and the Buffalo Sabres. So again, I don't see a situation where the Rangers would do that. I mean, if you take a look at their wing depth, what are they going to give up? They're not trading Lafreniere. They're not trading Capo Caco. They just signed Chris Kreider to a long-term deal not long ago. Um, you know, really, like, they have Panarin at the ink to a long-term contract. He's not going anywhere. I just don't see a scenario where that makes a lot of sense for the Rangers. Unless they're going to trade Kreider for Pacioretty, that's about the only, and I'm not sure that that's going to happen either, but that would be about the only way it would kind of make sense. And I don't see that making any sense from Vegas' standpoint. So to me, to have the Rangers link the patch already, like the Penguins, to me, again, does not really make any sense. So I'm going to say that that's not happening. Um, and I just don't see that being a possible now. The Sabres and the Devils do make some sense. I had reference before, him going to the Devils would be very interesting because you have to see how that dynamic with P.K. Subban would be. Of course, in case you don't remember, when they were both with the Habs, they used to fight and practice a lot. It was reported they really didn't like each other. Big time personality conflicts. Uh, Patrick Reddy, of course, was the captain those last few years there in Montreal. And things didn't go well with PK. And then many feel that Patrick Reddy's influence on the team, uh, at least at that point, and the fact that PK didn't get along with him and many other guys, kind of is what led to PK being traded, even though he was a talented player on the ice. Uh, the personality, the locker romantics, etc., just didn't jive well with the rest of that group. And he kind of overstayed his welcome, so to speak. But ultimately, that would be interesting. But the Devils are a team, to me, that wouldn't make sense. They're, again, a team going through a rebuild. They have the space. Makes sense. The Sabres, again, they only have Taylor Hall on a one-year deal, trying to make uh, the team better, stronger, long-term, build around Jack Eichel. Okay, they had a lot of guys that were on expiring contracts this past offseason. They have some flexibility now. That, to me, makes sense as well. So, to me, I think we can throw teams like the Devils as well as the Sabres to a degree, even a team like uh, the Red Wings, for example, maybe into the mix uh, for Patch Reddy or Jonathan Marshall. So, because to me, it's not a given that Patch Reddy gets traded. There's been a lot of chatter around him lately. And, uh, you know, maybe he does go. But I think it's just as likely that Marshall is a player that creates the cap space dump 
for the Vegas Golden Knights. And any of these same teams would be the most likely teams for them to go to because they're the only ones that really have the space as well as the assets to give up. Detroit now, on the other hand, they don't have a lot of great young assets that the, they're going to be looking for. Whereas a team, you know, like, for example, the LA Kings, like I mentioned, they have tons of prospects. The Rangers do as well. It just doesn't make sense for them to make the acquisition. So we will see. I mean, there's lots of talk around a lot of players right now. Obviously, there's a lot of unsigned players, a lot of deals that have not been completed because everything's up in the air. So, so that is your latest updates for today. Let me know your thoughts and everything down below in the comments, and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.